Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Saturday, September 12, 2015, around 6.02 in the morning. A little bit foggy out right now, but it's supposed to be nice and sunny day, close to 80, low humidity and stuff. Some news to report, the Tampa Bay Rays beat the Boston Red Sox by the score of 8-4. Also, the New York Mets won again, and the Washington Nationals lost. So the Mets' lead is eight and a half games over the Nationals. It's a done deal that the Mets are going to win the National League East. They're not going to have a major, major collapse like they did in 2007 because the Nationals stink. And Bloomberg is predicting that the next U.S. recession is going to hit in 2018 in about three years that's not good because there's still a lot of people who are looking for work period and some of them have just given up you can't give up on on looking for for any job these days because jobs are not going to come to find to you you got to go find them because you have to apply and apply and apply nothing falls on your lap so that's not good if, if another recession is predicted in three years. And that's about it on the news. My first video blog subject of the day is about Barry Wyndham's failed gimmicks in the WWE between 1989 and 1998. Barry Wyndham was, was one of the best wrestlers of his generation, second generation wrestler. His father was Black Jack Mulligan, a legendary wrestler and tag team wrestler who wrestled for over close to 30 years in the world of sports entertainment. He, like Black Jack Mulligan, teamed with Black Jack Lenzer to win several regional tag team titles, and also Black Jack Mulligan won the U.S. title, had legendary feud worth Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Rip Flair, Andre the Giant, and so many others. Barry Windham entered the world of sports entertainment in 1980. He was once billed as Black Jack Miles Clint Jr. in the Mid-Atlantic area. He eventually formed a tag team with Mike Rotundo. They were called the UX Express. They tag team in Florida and the WWE winning several tag team titles. Then Barry Windham went out on his own for singles um, competitors in 1986. He had a legendary feud with Ric Flair over the NWA World Title. Eventually, um, Barry Windham joined the Four Horsemen in 1988, and he was U.S. Champion. The, the, the Horsemen version of Windham, Flair, Arn Anderson, and Tully Branchard was one of the best. And in 1989, after Barry Windham dropped the U.S. title to Lex Luger, Barry Windham signed with the WWE, and he was given the gimmick of the Willmaker, which was like a heel western cowboy gimmick and it was kind of kind of a little shades of like the undertaker and stuff like that with the widow maker and stuff and he dressed like a heel cowboy in leather and stuff had his hair slicked back in a ponytail and stuff and the widow maker gimmick was decent for Barry and his promos for the as the widow maker were pretty good he was in the WWE for, for the summer of 1989 for about four or five months. He just wrestled um, preliminary matches, like jobber matches on television, squashing them, and Barry got a decent push, but he did not wrestle anybody significant on the roster and stuff. And by the fall of 1989, Barry left the WWE. He was slated to be on Macho King's team at Survivor Series 19. 89, but he left for personal reasons, the rumor going around that he had to take time off because his father, Black Jack Mulligan, and his uh, brother Kendall Wyndham were like arrested for like counterfeiting money and stuff like that in Florida for like a real estate thing. So Barry had to take personal time off, plus there was rumors he suffered some serious like arm injury and stuff and needed surgery, but who, who knows was kind of disappointed because the Widowmaker kind of was one of those gimmicks in the 
WWE that could have been what if that could have been a great potential that could have eventually had Barry Lyndon feud with like the top stars in the WWE like the Ultimate Warrior or Hulk Hogan. And Barry goes back to WCW, rejoins the Horsemen, but there was a, like a couple of year period that Barry was kind of not a major player in in like WCW because he was kind of a little like out of shape and stuff. And he went back from heel to face a few times. He got the NWA World Title in 1993 in WCW, but that at that time the NWA was basically a joke. And then Barry, like, retired because of serious knee injuries and stuff like that. But in 1996, Barry came back to the WWE, and he was given the Stalker gimmick, and they were promoting the Stalker on WWE television. Originally, the Stalker gimmick Barry Lyndon was going to have was going to be a heel, and he and, it, and the Stalker was going to feud with Mark Mello, and they were going to have something like... The stalker was going to slash Sable's throat, which Sable at the time was the valet for Mark Mello. Mark Mello and Sable in real life at that time were married, and Mark Mello vetoed that idea for the stalker, and it basically killed the gimmick before it made its debut on television as like something that could be a major character. And B Barry's stalker gimmick came on television in like September of 1996 as a face like he had like the camouflage on his face and plus in addition he wore like stuff that like camouflage green attire and stuff but the stalker gimmick for as a face was not great and stuff Barry got like a few wins here and there he was actually on Survivor Series 1996 with a team with like Mark Mallow, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Rocky Maivia, and the stock gimmick quickly died off, and in like, um, January of 1997, Barry got another gimmick, he teamed with like, Justin Hawk Bradshaw, and they were called New Blackjacks, like Barry cut his hair short and dyed it black and had a black mustache, and then he teamed with like, Justin Hop Bradshaw and he also cut his long hair and dyed his um his like hair black and they looked like the Blackjacks Blackjack Mollican and Blackjack Lange. It was a tribute to the Blackjack tag team in the seventies, but the Blackjacks team in the WWE for about a year or so, but they did not get too many shots at the WWE tag team titles. They like were once going to be recruited by Jim Cornette as like a, his a team for him to manage but um, the Blackjacks rejected that and they, they, they were originally heels but they turned face after that but they did not you know they weren't really pushed and stuff and in January of 1998 Barry turned on Blackjack um, Bradshaw and then joined the, the NWA faction and he died as a um, blonde again, the NWA faction was like the Rock and Roll Express, Jeff Jarrett, Dan Severin, and it, and the New Midnight Express managed by Jim Cornette, but that push did not last long, and Barry left the WWE f like f for, for good, like in the summer 1998, and we joined WCW and stuff, and basically all the times like Barry was in the WWE after like when he had that U.S. Express run with Mike Rotundo in 1985, two times that he was given like you know not so great gimmicks and stuff, great gimmicks and stuff, and you know the Widowmaker was like a gimmick that could have been pushed big time, but like he had personal problems and stuff and injuries. Like the stock gimmick sounded like an awesome gimmick and stuff, but. You know, once like Mark Mello with like cut um, rejecting the idea, that probably killed it off. And uh, the Blackjack, the tag team, the new Blackjacks was not very very good and stuff. And it just kind of, kind of one of those 
basic gimmick tag team for the WWE and that NWA faction in 1998 was probably to embarrass Jim Corner and stuff like that. It's too bad that Barry could have like been maybe a major player in the WWE and stuff, but it wasn't meant to be. There's a kind of rumors go- cir- circulating around for years that Barry was given a kind of horrible gimmick in the WWE because he left the company in the summer after, like, the fall of 1985 after, like, the U.S. Express run it after they lost the tag team titles to Beefcake and Valentine, the Dream Team and stuff, and the WWE was pissed because they had maybe big plans for Barry Windham to become a single star, and they, you know, given these gimmicks, but who knows? That's about it on that, and be back later Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter with two more video blogs. One's going to be about proposed high-speed speed train lines from Boston to Montreal and Boston to press our guy old main that will start at North Station. And third, the final video blog of the night will be Basketball Hall of Famer Dominic, Dominique Wilkins, the human highlight reel. Keep calm, and I'm Julie by the guy. Molly Rosenblatt of Fox 35 rocks. Amy Swansea of Reese 2 rocks. Elizabeth Hart of Local 6 rocks. And all four are cute blondes with nice legs. And in the words of Bruce Cronin, want to put a wager on that, Richie? See you later, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Bye now.